everyone, my name is Varnika Gupta and this presentation today is a part of I Am The Future series. In the series, we are speaking with various business leaders at Infosys and today I have with me Aarti Gusen, AVP Infosys Leadership Institute. Welcome to this presentation, Aarti, and thank you so much for being a part of the series. Happy to be I'm here. I'm so looking forward to our chat. So, you know, let's begin by knowing you a bit more, Aarti. What, uh, how would you describe yourself? Well, if um, if I pick a few words, I think um, I'm very curious, um, very authentic as well. And one word that I often use to describe myself is what I call as a champion. So a champion for people who I work with, champion for my team, champion for emphasis, champion for the leaders who I work with day to day. Sure. And who are who are the cheerleaders of this champion then? Who have oh, actually, cheerleader. my number one, my number one is my team. I mean, and I think so. It is one of the best teams that I've always ever worked for, and uh, also some of the leaders that I have built relationships over the years. Varnika here in Infosys, um, I can't forget my own family, <laughs> right? They are cheerleaders too. Sure, yeah, there are quite a few cheerleaders, and I am very eager to know more about these cheerleaders than Arti. <laughs> so you know, let's begin by family then. You know what? Wh how big what kind of family were you did, you did you grow up in what kind of conversations were happening around you and you you said earlier that you're curious what was fueling this curiosity so family wise parents were very strict right and uh, very early in our life uh, you know all the brothers and sisters were told to go ahead and you know figure out life for yourself uh, but the, that also came this this thought of you know you got to study and you got to you know do something on your own and please don't come looking to us for support. So the more I believe they got stricter, the more I wanted to actually have fun and you know break the boundaries and <laughs> be a rebel. I believe. Uh, but I think um, what at the during the conversations with the family, right? Uh, one of the things that often used to be discussed was uh, politics and history and economics and uh, so a lot of debate that's what used to happen um, at the dinner table uh, but of course because you know because parents were the authority figure at that point in time and of course right, what they would say I believe was actually true uh, mm -hmm. later on to learn you know I have figured my own way and some of the things that I sincerely don't believe in right <laughs> what I used to believe in earlier uh, but uh, I think um, my perspective comes from my mum um and the hard work and courage comes from my dad right so and then of course you know i'm a i was a single girl growing up in a big family which only had boys so i played cricket i played football you know i was running in the lanes around our neighborhood and uh, you give me a cricket bat today I, I genuinely believe i can still stand straight for the three overs and at least still hit some boundaries Right. So that's where it was from a childhood standpoint. And back in the day, um, I was quite a tomboy, so I never would fit in with the boys or with the girls. Right. So uh, one friend of mine who used to really understand me and uh, I unfortunately lost her to cancer. Um, she was very young. Um, and um, when I reflect, the only one regret that I have in my life is that I should have stayed in touch with her. And that episode, one of the things that I have always invested in is uh, stay in touch, be with people, understand what they're going through, um, and uh, be there, right, whenever they need me. Um, and that was also somehow that I have built myself, even in terms of my career, in terms of my conversations with people as well. And hence that nurturing relationships, um, helping people through, being aware, sometimes just be a sponge, just listen. If you can't do anything else, right? But the most precious thing I have is to give my time. And that's the precious currency that I have. And sometimes these relationships need that. You were talking about how this friend of yours, you know, she understood that uh, this whole conflict that you were going through uh, of being a misfit. Uh, that So uh, how do you think all those experiences that led you to think that you were a misfit has helped your, has helped in, uh, you know, you getting a more personalized understanding of diversity and inclusion and how has that uh, evolved for you over the years? Uh, so first thing I used to, of course, be angry earlier about why don't people just get me? 
And later on, I what I realized was, see, everybody is unique. I may not be everyone's cup of tea. I could be unique. I could be a square peg in a round hole. But that's what's unique about me. And then similarly, other people are unique in their ways too as well. So accepting people for who they are, right? How they are becomes really important for me. That is one thing. Secondly, I've also figured that their their diversity comes in even in terms of the way we do our work, our why's, hows, and um, what's are very different. And sometimes when you bring these multiple why's and multiple what's and multiple hows together, what you're able to craft as a solution or an offering, right, in, in our work, uh, even becomes more stronger, right? For example, while my strength is engagement, right, uh, a colleague of mine, her strength is execution, you know. Um, our leadership um, strength is about thinking things strategically. So imagine when the confluence of all of this happens together, right? And that's the reason why we were able to craft something out, which is a, which is I am the future program. And that's like one big testament, right, of all these diverse thoughts and skills and competencies coming together as well. And there was this time when I had um, recently come into emphasis and um, I have a particular way of working. There is a bit of perfection in me that... Uh, I drive with, and uh, but I, I was also wanting to know if this is working for the team. And there is one um, really amazing person on our team, and she gave me this feedback, Rati, you are so perfect, and you think of every angle, but I'm afraid of making a mistake. If I make a mistake, I, I think that, you know, I will lose your trust. And I'm like, oh, that's brilliant, right? Thank you very much. So I asked her, so dial it down a little bit, and she said, yes, and I said, fair enough. And of course, it's a, it's a mess muscle that I had to flex myself, Varnika. Uh, but, you know, the power of that was when I stopped telling people what to do and how to do and uh, telling them every angle, what I could figure was that, you know, they can find solutions themselves. They just do not always have to be told. And sometimes I, I become that coach outside the football court that never has to enter the football field because that's the best moment for the coach. Right? That you never ever have to step into the football field to talk to a player. So that has been one. Um, second thing uh, in my work, uh, a lot of people have their own individual context as they are going through their own leadership journeys. And I think that what becomes important is to understand the individual context, right? Connect it to their business context and then connect all of this to the org context, right? And if you notice, all these three things for multiple people will be very different, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. But the but the success is to be able to stitch it together in such a way that people actually go ahead and uh, continue their journeys or progress in their own careers in a way that they see it as successful. Uh, I think my early career, I grew really without any mentors. So, you know, I did what I wanted to do. I figured it out. You know, my, my favorite word used to be go figure, right? We'll figure it out. Um, and, 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 and by the way, that mindset allowed me to grow really fast, uh, Varnika. But there come, came a point in time where I had to pause uh, because of certain reasons, you know, which were more personal. And a person who's as fast as me, and suddenly you have to stop and pause you know, throws you out of the um, realm. Uh, but I'm glad that I chose to pause, right? And first, the way to handle it was to tell my own manager, who I genuinely believe is the sculptor of my current leadership, all right? <laughs> uh, talk honestly to my team uh, and my peers as well to say you know, where I really am. Um, choosing between pausing and stopping, I chose pause because I believe if you pause a little... Uh, then you can run a bit faster. You know, to slow down my speed was one of the biggest challenges. Um, but uh, also use that time to making a very conscious choice to become a learner, right? Um, and because I don't have to do everything on my own, but I also have an ecosystem. I have an ecosystem if I ask for it. And my biggest learning was if I ask for that ecosystem, that ecosystem is there. Um, and sometimes I did not even have to ask for it. I just had to tell them what was going on. And it's just naturally, you know, it, it went ahead. And here I am talking to you, you know, in my healthy spirits right now. And, uh, you know, it's a great place to be. Well, were there any people when you were growing up, you know, probably your mother or your father who who influenced you or who you, 
who mentored you in a way that today you have this immense clarity of you know being this professional this independent woman because my parents told me that you have to figure out life of your own and uh, if i was not doing this i would have been a journalist honestly speaking varnika um you know but you know they just weren't ready to <laughs> you know give me money for a prospectus so then i was you know of course uh, rebellious and i said oh you're not going to give me money so i am actually go ahead and you know make my own money so i think it was the age of 19 i started to work so in the mornings i used to get up go for my economics tuition take a bus in delhi um then from there i used to go do my work used to come back i used to study at home do the weekend classes for college um and um what what has honestly it made me very independent is that aspect of financial independence for nika um i've been investing since i was 19 years old right uh with with portfolios in terms of uh, there's a decent amount of you know debt portfolio equity portfolio you know investment in property and i have a very diversified portfolio um uh, i bought a house when i was 27 um and um i do my own bills and um Uh, you know just make sure that i am on track of my investments or so exactly know you know when my investments are maturing and whatever i want to do right uh, whatever i want to achieve i can do it on my own um, and that's something i genuinely believe i'm very 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 thankful for my parents um uh, because if they would not have told me that you go figure things out on your own right i uh, i wouldn't have been here the way i am uh, and very very early i understood that there is a difference between conflict and competition in the world all right and for me now my framing is that there there is conflict and if there is conflict that gives you the ability to communicate and engage with people and you just have to identify you know what's causing the conflict uh and because of that aspect i also believe that independence of reaching out picking the phone calling someone up and say you know hey how can i help and i know we are stuck uh, how do we move forward Uh, i believe is where you know this early childhood early mentoring in the yoga in my career has actually helped me right and just to be the person actually that i am no arti like you're saying that you know you, you got that uh, early mentoring in your career those opportunities that you know helped you become who you are today but not everyone has those opportunities or not everyone is that aware or that empowered how do you think uh, we and especially you know for someone like you who's now in the leadership position is handling teams has you know is it is an empowered individual and professional herself how do people like you how can you help uh, you know someone else who has not had similar experiences and probably is struggling i was i was lucky that i got a mentor Uh, if i ever have to go back in time answer and give myself you know one advice i would say go ask for one art you don't wait for people to give you a mentor right uh, but um, i think uh, with mentoring uh, what really drives me is uh, this this whole concept of giving back and so i do mentor a few people they are within the organization they are outside the organization too i i also use this term which is called as personal board of directors right if i am a company i may also have personal board of directors right okay and those people could be my 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 current managers my current leaders um, people who manage me back in the day they could be my peers too and they could be my mentors as well and i think so like a, like a healthy company has a healthy board right so mentor could be a very important aspect of that personal board of directors that one should definitely have This journey has been amazing actually um you know it 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 brings in this excitement of a new place it brings in the excitement of although i've invested 5 years of my time here uh but uh, i still feel like the new kid on the block right so there's there's always this 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 mode of learning curiosity in terms of understanding people's business it's very important in my work to understand the business that leaders are actually in um so and then build relationships and uh, one of the things that i love is the the passion you know the the le- the legacy in the system and uh, also the drive and the ambition of the organization right to to do more to be more right and i think so that kind of resonates and connects really well with 
my own value system and energy system as well i think that's what just just it just made the choice very easy uh, so at you know when you were talking about your journey at infosys now you you stressed upon the fact that connecting with people has been so important for you throughout this journey so you know help us understand how this how this journey took place for you internally as well because you know you spoke about being this rebellious kid being someone who felt that she was not included and she felt excluded uh, how has this journey been like what has been the milestones some challenges achievements learning from this rebellious kid to someone who now gives so much value to human connections thank you for asking that question varnika it's a brilliant one um see one thing that i understood very early was um, if people don't understand me why do i leave it to people for them to understand me why do i not make an effort to help them understand me right so picking up the phone and just calling just became a second nature and often my most most beautiful relationships varnika um, you know since last decade has actually been where uh where you know people were critical of me and because of the conversation between us you know that relation changed to something like you know that that they were friends and we are thought leadership partners and um even today right i may not be living in the same city but if i arrive at the city and i say i am here right those people come in right um and i think it's just sometimes my own reach out did the mix in some cases people took interest in me right to understand me more and they you know they tried to take off that outer layer to really understand who i was and i'm very thankful to those people because they really invested their time i mean um and time is precious as i said it's a currency um to actually understand to know me better and and in and in this journey um becoming a learner was became so important right when i spoke to you about pausing and reflect and choosing to be a learning learner because i i genuinely believe there was a point in time i used to know i used to think i know it all right i've done it all right um and with these conversation and people really understood me my own vulnerability also brought out what are some of the things i still need to learn <laughs> what are some of the things i still need to do and i think uh, it's just that that connection bit from both sides and openness from both sides me my willingness to open up to people um people's willingness to open up and you know accept me um and being curious about me, i think so that's what that's where the shift is now at if someone were uh, if someone say an aspiring professional irrespective of the gender is is looking at this interview right now what would you want their key takeaways to be from your journey and what can they learn from your journey that will probably help them grow into this wholesome human being i think i would want people to reflect uh, reflective observations are very important varnika and uh, also at the same point in time you know stay authentic i mean um, they would be people who are better than us learn from them and uh, the last thing is see we i am at emphasis um i am an an organizational leader first right my team comes the next so if say foundation is emphasis and home is emphasis leadership institute and if i take care of the foundation and take care of the home i will persevere no matter what thank you so much aarti for you know sharing uh, your journey with us sharing all those lovely experiences and stories i'm sure any, everyone who's listening uh, this interview today they've thoroughly enjoyed and everyone thank you so much for tuning in and we will have more such sessions lined up so keep watching this space and keep reading your story thank you